What's up everyone, it's Karthik with MoneyVest. So we've got massive NVIDIA earnings coming up tomorrow after the bell. And NVIDIA is perhaps one of the, one of the most important stocks in the market. And it's one of my biggest positions in the options portfolio. And I've also got a very, very important message to all investors and traders because I read a comment in my yesterday's market update, which I really wanted to address, as well as of course, going over the market update from today and also introducing a brand new MoneyVest index features. So this right here is the shape of the market. NVIDIA here pushing up a little bit over 4.8, almost 5% on the day ahead of earnings. And Tesla here up over 2%. Amazon also rallying a little bit over 1.4%. Uh, and Walmart here pushing up over 3% after beating expectations on earnings and revenue. Now, there are some tensions that are increasing between Russia and Ukraine after Russia says that Ukraine attacked it using uh, long-range U.S. missiles, signals it's ready for a nuclear response, and uh, Putin is also lowering the threshold for a nuclear strike. And uh, this right here was from Tiffany McGee, says, and I quote, the conflict is escalating. I clearly expect to see some kind of immediate reaction or a knee-jerk reaction in the market's as well. Now, the markets were lower. The Nasdaq did drop, S&P 500 and the Dow Jones were lower after this news, but of course, ahead of the Nvidia earnings and the fact that it was one of the biggest gainers on the day, capitalizing on over $170 billion worth of gains here, definitely uh, increasing the markets overall. So we did have the big three up over $189 billion, most of that coming from Nvidia, and the MAX7 up over $298, almost $300 billion. Um, and then, of course, we had Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta Platforms, and even Tesla. Pretty much every single stock here on the day was pushing higher very, very nicely. If you look at the Magnificent Seven and some of the stocks that were selling off quite a bit, we had United Healthcare, uh, United Health Insur Group, we got Intuit, Exxon Mobil, Berkshire Hathaway, Lowe's. They were the ones that were selling off quite a bit here in terms of those market caps. And then we also did have Moderna, Intuit, we had Walgreens, Lowe's. All of these companies also selling off quite a bit. Now, this right here, Nasdaq up a little bit over 1%, S&P up over 40 basis points. And today, the portfolio was up almost $7,000. And we made a huge new improvement in the MoneyVest index. So this right here, if you come over here, you'll notice that not only do we have the actual MoneyVest reading with the actual uh, remark, whether it's optimistic, neutral, uncertainty, fear, whatever, but we also do have the every single year's worth of chart and you can also look at one year, three year, five, seven, ten, and all time chart as well. And this is exactly what you see on TradingView. So if you want to get access to that, of course, the link's going to be down below. This right here is what I've shown you guys on our um, on our previous video. So this right here is going to be TradingView. So this exact chart now is going to be available over here on the MoneyVest platform. You can look at the last seven years worth of analysis. You can look at the last ten years. You can also go one by one year by, you know, one by one for every year. And so right now we're looking at 2024. If you go for the previous year, I've also pointed out to exactly where those signals were triggered by the MoneyVest index. So those red dots are all signals in the market when we were trading down to that uncertainty, that fear, and that panic level, according to the MoneyVest index. So again, 2022, so many signals triggered. 2021, there was just a few of them. 2020, of course, we got down to some very, very aggressive levels. This was the first time we entered into that panic zone. Markets stayed that for quite a few weeks. And of course, we covered back up very, very nicely. And this right here is also going to be year by year table, which you can pretty much look at. So you can sort by year or you can sort by how many times we've gotten down to that panic reading or that fear reading or that uncertainty reading by this MoneyVest index. So I think it's going to be a very, very useful tool. And every single year, we're going to get at least a few buying opportunities. So the whole idea behind today's video is one of the quotes from Seneca, one of the greatest philosophers of all time, it is quality rather than quantity that matters. And, you know, it, it's kind of crazy because my investing and trading has evolved over the years, and I have now really started to focus a lot, of, a lot on quality over quantity. I used to have a lot of positions in my portfolio and over the times I have really cut down on some big losers to really double down on some heavy winners over the long term and have really trimmed down the entire portfolio, whether it's the long term, whether it's the options portfolio. And I've really triggered, you know, some very important signals in my life that have really resulted in me just focusing on the bigger picture 
and what really matters. So the whole idea, and one of the things that I mentioned in my yesterday's update is that yes, I can sit here and talk a lot about seasonality, a lot of different data points, a lot of different market, macro market indicators and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it really all boils down to one thing. How is all of this going to affect earnings? I've mentioned this before, and I will say this again. Every time somebody's talking about a recession, a pandemic, a depression, any type of economic contraction, any type of macroeconomic event, any type of news, all investors care about is one thing and one thing only. And that is how is this going to affect the bottom line, which is profit, which is earnings per share. Whether it's interest rates going up, down, sideways, whether it's inflation going back up again, going down, sideways, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is earnings per share. And that is the bottom line. And so as long as we understand that earnings per share are going to see those cyclical seasonalities where they come down and they go back up again, they come down, they go back up again, there's going to be some years where the growth rates are going to be flat, maybe declining in one year, and they're going to accelerate back up, um, is, is, is the years that we understand that, okay, long term, the markets are going to do really well. In fact, over a 20-year period, the rolling 20-year period, any 20-year period you pick in the markets, uh, we're going to find ourselves 100% profitable in that 20-year period. So it really comes down to quality over quantity. And our job is to cut out all the noise, all the unnecessary noise that is out there in the market and really drill down to just a few very high quality signals and a few very high quality long-term businesses that we believe in. And that will do the job. That will get the job done. And that's really kind of transformed my investing and trading over the years. And I've got numbers to show you also, because if you take a look at the portfolio here, you know, sitting at just over $111,000, this is just the options portfolio. This is not my main long-term investment account, just the options portfolio. Of course, today was up a little bit over 1%. But if you take a look at the max change of 58, almost $59,000 increase, right, in this in this portfolio. And this is kind of carrying it forward from TD Ameritrade as well, because that was acquired by Charles Schwab. Um, and then if you take a look at all these positions here, again, of course, you've got, re- you know, very minimal positions in the options portfolio, Tesla, NVIDIA, you know, plus $32,000. And of course, I've got some calls here that are against those options, against those uh, shares. And of course, I've got the SOXL puts as well that are down about $9,000. So all in all, I mean, this portfolio is up a little bit over $22,000, $23,000, right? So the bottom line is, Quality over quantity will win out eventually almost every single time. The more decisions you make, the more fatigue you're going to be. And so my recommendation to everyone, especially if you are a new investor, if you are a new trader that is just getting started, yes, there's always going to be that attractiveness that you want to do a lot of things. You want to swing trade, you want to day trade, you want to trade options, you want to trade penny stocks, you want to trade large cap, you want to trade this, that, Bitcoin, whatever. There's going to be a lot of shiny things in front of you in the markets. But my recommendation for everyone is going to be drill down on just a few things. Do a few things, but do them really, really well. That's it. Do a few things in the market that only you can do. You're an expert in those things. So I consider myself to be very good at, of course, running the wheel strategy, trading options, and also investing long term with just a few select high quality companies. That's it, right? So just do a few things and do them really well. And I assure you, you're going to see a big change in your results, in your gains, in your investing, in your trading. You're going to make fewer decisions, but you're going to make them high quality and you're going to be better off because I've been there before. I've had decision fatigue. I've used to make a lot of decisions. I thought that having a portfolio of 40 stocks is the way to go, go about it, but there's no way I can know everything about 40 stocks. There's absolutely no way. So study a few companies, but study them well and understand their businesses, understand their intrinsic value, understand their support, resistance levels, trade well, trade smartly, and most importantly, preserve capital because risk management is all that matters in the game of finance, trading, and investing. Capital management, risk management is everything in this game. So if there's one thing that you take away from this video is take away the quote from Seneca, it's quality rather than quantity that matters. That's it. Make fewer decisions, but make them higher quality decisions. Don't focus on having too many things on the table. Just cut out all the all the fat and all the noise. Just focus on what really matters. And I'm telling you, just double down on your best strengths here. And I'm telling you, your, your trading investing will change for the better. So if you want a community that is going to help you with that in your journey, again, link's going to be down below if you want to get access to everything, including the options portfolio, the trade alerts, 
weekly updates. I send them out every single week, every Sunday, Saturday. You can expect the options portfolio update as well as all the trade alerts that go out every Friday and Monday. So link's gonna be down below. Uh, again, we'll love to have you on board. And uh, of course, you can access the MoneyVest Index as well, which is gonna give you a little bit of an insight on when these buy signals are triggered, which again is a quality indicator. We've back tested this really well. Um, and as soon as it comes down to, let's say, under three, 3.5 ideally, uh, is when that signal is going to trigger and that's going to be a buying opportunity. So for example, right now we're sitting at 3.59. So the moment it dips below 3.5, we're going to be in a neutral territory. So this year you can argue that we haven't really seen any type of a buy signal trigger for the market, maybe in August. And that was also pre-market when the VIX was, you know, well above 65 and this money vest index dipped below three for a very brief two hour period. And then of course we reversed back up. So Right now, we're at 3.59 as of November 19th. And again, the lower it gets down to, the better those buying opportunities will be. So patience is a very, very important. Um, so be patient, be disciplined, wait for the higher quality signals, higher quality triggers. And that's when you can deploy capital. And that's when you can be a lot more confident that the risk reward is very much in your favor as opposed to the other way around. So, so that's exactly what I wanted to go over. And uh, again, coming back over to the markets, we had volatility here pushing up back over 16 here, just up a little bit over 4.9, almost 5% on the day. Bitcoin also touching up to almost $93,000. In fact, $94,000 for the first time in history, just shy of 100,000 here for uh, Bitcoin, which is an incredible feat altogether. And if you come over to market breadth here, again, majority of stocks are trading above their moving averages, whether it's the 20, the 50, or the 200 simple moving average. And then if you come over to crude oil, we did see a little bit of a rebound here from that support of 66 to $67 per barrel for crude oil. So nice little momentum back up. Now coming over to the markets. So SPX here on the day, pushing up a little bit over 60, uh, actually 40 basis points. So again, this was the support level that we identified in our previous updates, 58.60 to 58.75. Very nice support. We're seeing a little bit of buyers to step back in. That's good to see. And again, tomorrow we've got the big NVIDIA earnings. So if you come over to our market calendar, uh, you can see NVIDIA, $33.6 billion of revenue expectations with about a 76 cents in earnings per share. Now, I have no doubt that NVIDIA is going to beat these numbers and they're just going to blow them out of the water. But is NVIDIA going to go higher? That's up for debate because, uh, you know, it's really just priced for perfection here. And a lot of that growth is already priced in. Uh, of course, you know, the the guidance is what's really going to matter for NVIDIA, what kind of guidance they provide us for the future quarter. But this is going to be the very, very important earnings that are coming out tomorrow after the bell. Uh, Walmart beating expectations very nicely. Lowe's also beating expectations here. So consumer strength is still very strong if Walmart is coming in and Lowe's is coming in with some very strong numbers here. So tomorrow, get ready for big, big numbers here from NVIDIA. NASDAQ here also up over 1%, very nice rebound from that support of 18.6. And the next target, next resistance is going to be all the way up to 19,300. So that's going to be that level uh, to keep in mind. Nice little recovery back up. And, you know, that right there is going to be that all-time high, of course, and that's going to be that resistance. And if you come over to that market snapshot, uh, we are still very much in a dip to a little bit of a pullback to a correction for the markets. And it's kind of nice to see that Tesla is now only, only 16.5% away from its all-time highs. I mean, this is actually quite crazy if you consider how far Tesla has come. So if you move over to Tesla now, uh, very nice move, 346, right? So we were expecting a little bit of a pullback here, considering how parabolic the stock was and how incredible that momentum was and nice little pullback. And we're seeing that next leg up for Tesla once again. However, we're still uh, pretty overbought, technically speaking, for, uh, for Tesla. So if you compare this to the all-time high, of $414, which is going to put us right around here. Uh, Tesla right now is down exactly 16.5%. We're very close to all-time highs here for uh, for Tesla. So, you know, it's possible that we see all-time highs for Tesla before the end of this year. If there's new uh, catalysts that keep coming in, uh, you know, under the new administration, it's possible that Tesla actually closes out very, very strongly. And year-to-date, the stock is now up over 38%. So very, very nice move from Tesla. Uh, coming over to Apple here and Apple on the day, also consolidating sideways. Uh, resistance we've already talked about at 236. So that right there is going to be that level to watch for Apple. And again, a lot of consolidation here. 214 is going to be that support. Coming over to Amazon. Amazon also was selling off quite aggressively here. 
bouncing off of that area of demand and that support. Once again, buyers are stepping in in the low 200s for Amazon and again, up over 1.4%. So we're still within the context of this uptrend with a very nice strong area of demand and support sitting in the low 200s for Amazon. Tesla, we just went over. I may do a video on Tesla and NVIDIA more specifically uh, prior to the numbers for NVIDIA coming out tomorrow. So look out for that video as well. But next resistance is gonna stay put at 149, closer to 150 dollars for nvidia that's pretty much the all-time high and let me know in the comment section down below what are you thinking about nvidia i actually rolled out my nvidia calls uh to to from february to march and also collected a little bit over i think 100 bucks or a little bit over 100 bucks 170 bucks or something uh in net credit and then i also unlocked about three more dollars in capital gains so you can see that my call strike is now at 125 so originally it was at 122, now it's at 125. So I was able to unlock $3 per share in capital gains uh, of my 600 shares. Uh, that is now just a little bit over $1,800 also unlocked for NVIDIA. So right now up over 36%. And I'm expecting after tomorrow, we'll see what the earnings look like, whether I'm gonna be up or down on this position. Uh, but, but bottom line is, again, I'm expecting a beat on revenue and earnings. But how the stock reacts, of course, is up for a debate because of how much being already priced into that stock right now for nvidia so we'll see it's going to be a big day for me because options portfolio it's my biggest position 600 shares in this stock here so resistance is going to stay put roughly at 149 150 support level is going to stay put at 133 dollars for nvidia uh, coming over to advanced micro devices and amd also seeing some buyers to step back in in that support at 133 134 Again, very, very oversold. So we're seeing a little bit of that momentum come back in. Resistance all the way up to $150. So that right there is gonna be that level to keep in mind for advanced micro devices um, at the moment. Now, we're also gonna include for Palantir in our analysis moving forward. We're also talking about Palantir in quite a lot of detail. So if you come over to PLTR over here, you'll notice just new all-time highs coming in almost every single day. Saw a little bit of a pullback in profit taking yesterday, but this is definitely a very blow the top off rally for Palantir. I'd just be very, very careful here, considering how overbought the stock is right now. Not to mention fundamentally, valuation-wise, it is also incredibly expensive, but not to mention they've got a very strong support sitting right about here at 58 to $59. We had some buyers stepping in, in and around these levels on the four-hour chart. Uh, and of course, the all-time high resistance stays per roughly $67 per share for Palantir. So that right there, a lot of consolidation. Those right there are gonna be some levels to keep in mind for this company. Uh, now coming over to, uh, let's see, Tesla we already covered, let's go over to PayPal. And PayPal actually sold some longer dated calls in the 125. Uh, PayPal did recover a little bit on the day, so very nice to see that we did see some buyers stepping in even after the gap down, there was a green candle, uh, but we were expecting a little bit of a pullback considering how overbought it was on the RSI and the MACD. So resistance is gonna stay put at $88, $89. Support level sitting roughly at $81, $82 per share for PayPal. So I did sell some calls, four calls actually, collected just over $1,300 um, for selling those calls on PayPal. Way out of the money, expecting for them to expire worthless, but even if they don't, I'm happy selling my shares uh, at $125 for PayPal one year out. So again, link's gonna be down below if you want to join, get that 16% annual discount that's also available until the end of this month, uh, and you get two free months with that as well. You can access the entire MoneyVest website, as well as all the trade alerts, options alerts, weekly updates, members-only videos, as well as the Discord channels as well. Now coming over to Visa, also consolidating sideways, trading pretty much near all-time highs. Uh, support level is gonna step down at 290s, and got a huge gap to also fill for Visa. Coming over to Meta platforms now, and Meta also here has been rolling over just a little bit, some buyers stepping in here, 1.2% higher. However, resistance is going to stay put at 600 bucks. Support level sitting roughly at 539 to $540 for Meta. So a lot of consolidation sideways for this company. Again, nice little higher highs and higher lows. Resistance is going to stay put at 600 bucks, like I said, and support level down at 540 for this company. Now, Netflix has been doing really well ever since the Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight here, as well as a lot of new series and a lot of new additions Netflix has been in a, on a whole different chart here, uh, hitting new all-time highs almost every single day with the RSI. MACD just keeps on crushing it. Overbought, just coming in super hot, and it is just becoming absolutely ridiculous um, how incredible that rally has been, that momentum has been for Netflix. So I'd just be super careful here considering the overbought conditions 
for Netflix, uh, sitting at just over $871. And in fact, in the market snapshot, it's one of the only stocks that continues to post an all-time high. Absolutely incredible. Congratulations to all Netflix traders and investors. Uh, coming over to Google here, and Google also seeing that momentum back up, up over 1.5%. Resistance is going to stay put at $183, support level at 175 Again, a lot of consolidation sideways here for Google. And Microsoft here also consolidating sideways in that range, not really going anywhere. Uh, resistance is going to stay put at 432 to 441 A lot of demand sitting in the low 400s for Microsoft. And finally, we come over to Enphase, which continues to be a little bit more you know, weak uh, momentum-wise, finding that support at $58, $59. It's really just trading sideways. At the moment, a resistance is going to stay put at $73, $74 for Enphase. And then finally, we come over to Costco. Uh, we got Costco here also trading sideways with a resistance uh, pretty much back up to all-time highs at 962 963 uh, with a support level, of course, sitting roughly in this range between low 900s to as much as 920 for Costco. So hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Get ready for tomorrow's big NVIDIA earnings. I will keep you guys posted with where I'm at in the options portfolio for NVIDIA. I've already rolled my contract out one another month, unlocking another $3 in capital gains per share. Um, and then we'll see if I can roll out my Tesla calls as well that are expiring next year, February 25, 250 strike is where I'm at with those calls. So I'll keep you guys updated. SOXL is also going to move depending on where NVIDIA trades after hours. And I've got the 28 and $26 puts, one of them expiring this Friday, another one's expiring next Friday. Uh, so we've got a lot of options to take care of later this week here after NVIDIA earnings. So make sure that you drop a like, subscribe. And again, if you want to get access to all the trade alerts, link's going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. If you have any questions, we're all here to help each other. And that's what makes our community so unique, so amazing, is that we're all here to support every single person in the community. So as always, happy investing. See you all in the next video.